इंदिरा गांधी नेशनल ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी प्रेजेंट्स अ प्रोग्राम ऑन डिप्लोमा इन बिजनेस प्रोसेस आउटसोर्सिंग फाइनेंस एंड अकाउंटिंग कोर्स कोड बी पी ओ आई जीरो जीरो सिक्स लेट्स लिसन टू अ प्रोग्राम ऑन कस्टमर सर्विसेज पार्टिसिपेंट्स आर प्रोफेसर अंजू सहगल गुप्ता रूबी सिंह रोजिलिन सपना चंद्रभूषण सांदियाल एंड नवीन पंडिता ब्लॉक फोर कस्टमर सर्विस यूनिट फोर्टीन types of customers 14.4 listening there are as many types of customers as there are types of people also different customers have different sets of expectations from the products and services they want to buy or have bought both of these together determine the types of customers you are likely to deal with on a day to day basis loud and aggressive customers can be very demanding and find it difficult to understand an opinion different from theirs they are more than likely to make unreasonable requests and the sooner they are pacified the less is the danger of the exchange escalating to unpleasant heights use a calm and soothing tone of voice and pacifying words like please i understand and i agree be assertive but make sure nothing you say sounds remotely rude or aggressive then there are the analytical questioning types they will carefully evaluate the pros and cons before making a decision and ask a volley of questions some relevant and some not so see that you stick to logic and make sure there are no loopholes in any solution you offer state facts and figures with care and precision If in doubt, offer to transfer the call to somebody who can supply the more technical details. The skeptical types are those who have a hard time trusting anything you say. Be prepared to buttress your points with all the data at your disposal. Speak with conviction. Choose your words with care. Reassure them of full future support, and see that you provide it. Be careful how you deal with the shy, timid ones. they tend to sound apologetic and unsure and can be easily intimidated so the first thing you need to do is to make them feel comfortable probe gently for their needs use an encouraging tone of voice and assure them of your intentions with words like i'll be happy to do that for you you also need to be especially careful with the technically aware customers they tend to be somewhat impatient These are straightforward people who need you to be honest about the advantages and disadvantages of what you are about to offer and have no patience with ambiguity or vagueness. Acknowledge the fact that they are technically well versed but maintain a quietly assertive tone for they can be a little overbearing. If unsure about some details, be candid and seek assistance immediately. You will be pleased to come across the extroverts. They are talkative and friendly. and happy to part with any information you seek reciprocate the friendliness but just be careful not to get sidetracked by too much chatter then there are certain personal traits that make different people respond in varied ways you will need to coax information out of the passive customers a little like with the shy ones with the chronic complainers you play the balancing act admitting they are right where you need to and gently putting your foot down where they are unreasonable The irate customer's temper is ready to explode so be patient but firm those who constantly try to interrupt need to be told firmly that listening once in a while isn't a bad idea activity 4 situation 1 this is only a sample conversation yours could be different but try to use the relevant phrases from the box in the speaking section and from the language focus section hello good afternoon sir this is raman from xyz connections 
I have called about an outstanding bill of yours. As far as I can remember, there is no outstanding bill I need to pay. Please don't disturb me with these false bills. I'm afraid there is. The outstanding amount is two hundred rupees, and it has been due for the last two months. Can't you understand when someone tells you something once? I understand what you're saying, but according to our records, a payment of two hundred rupees is outstanding against your bill for the month of May. Well, this is a late payment charge that I had been told would be waived when I spoke to your executive last month. I'm afraid there is no such record of the waiver. However, uh, here's what I can do. I will. Situation five. This is only a sample conversation. Yours could be different, but try to use the relevant phrases from the box in the speaking section, and from the language focus section. Remember that you are speaking with a shy customer. Hello. Good afternoon. This is Manish from Welcome Appliances. May I speak with Miss Amrita Singh? Um. Yes. Uh. This is she. Uh, what is this about? I hope I'm not disturbing you, but I need to remind you of a payment that is due. It is your instalment for the month of March for the computer you bought in January. Uh, so, um, uh, when is this due? I'm afraid it is already overdue by almost a month, and your next instalment will be due to in another week. Oh, uh, actually, I don't know. If you find this payment scheme inconvenient, may I make a suggestion? Yes. Um. Okay. What I can do is I can split the payment. Pronunciation, fourteen point eight point two. Content words and grammatical words. Nouns, main verbs, adjectives, adverbs, question words, and demonstratives are content words. That is, they have independent meaning of their own. And articles, pronouns. prepositions auxiliary verbs conjunctions are grammatical words that is their main function is to show the grammatical relations among words a few examples are given in which only the content words are stressed and the grammatical words are left unstressed the stress words are marked with a vertical bar i gave him 10 books I love my friends. I love to live in Delhi. There are ten boys and five girls in our class. My son is a good driver. I ate some rice and curd. We have a grey cat in our house. Give me six eggs, please. In the examples given before, most of the content words are monosyllabic. What happens when a content word has more than one syllable? If a content word that has more than one syllable occurs in a piece of connected speech, we stress only that syllable in it, which we stress if we were to say the word by itself. Here are a few examples in which the content words have more than one syllable each. The coffee was excellent. It was an excellent achievement. I've made a mistake. They have declared a holiday today. Do you require any assistance? I will never forget you. We visited London last summer. Islam is the religion of Muslims. I have an important examination tomorrow. Unit fifteen. Essentials of customer service. Fifteen point two. Check your progress. One. Listening. Customer service. What is customer service? Is it the ability to communicate to your customers all that your company can provide them, or is it something more than that? If it is something more, then what is that something? In simple terms, customer service is an organization's ability to fulfill their customers' needs. But what makes an organization's customer service exceptional? Superior customer service is that which exceeds your customers' expectations and makes your business stand out from that of your competitors. 
What this essentially means is that every aspect of your business has an impact on what you finally deliver to your customer. Good customer service is not just limited to face-to-face -face customer contact with the person availing of your services or telephonic conversation you may have with him while providing the service or product. From the moment a customer thinks of purchasing a product or service from you, then through the sales process and the service you render thereafter, at every stage there are opportunities for an organization to add customer service to the product. Although it's true that a good salesperson can sell anything to anyone once, you have to remember that good customer service is all about bringing the customer back. This he will do only if he goes away satisfied the first time, in which case you also hope that he will pass positive feedback about your business to others, who may then try the product or service you offer for themselves and in their turn become repeat customers. Word of mouth referral is the most effective form of promotion. It costs nothing and carries a lot of credibility as it is based on personal experience. On the other hand, a customer who has had a bad experience is likely to tell 10 other people about it, who in all probability will pass on the information to as many more. It is not difficult to imagine how much damage bad publicity of this sort can do to a business. Additionally, it's important to remember that finding new customers is more expensive than retaining existing ones and a lost customer is also lost revenue, not to mention the damage he will do to your repetition. So essentially, it will be your approach and attitude that determines whether a customer is ever likely to come back to you for something else. You need to win over your customer in a manner that builds a relationship with him, her, a relationship that an individual customer is comfortable with, and feels that he she would like to pursue. The bottom line really is you may slash prices, do sales promotions or whatever else you can think of to bring in new customers but the only way for your business to stay profitable is to bring back some of those customers. 15.9 Pronunciation Stress and Rhythm in Connected Speech 2 Weak Forms Listen to how the weak forms are pronounced. It's a book. He ate an apple. The 8th of June. The book's here. I'm going to Delhi. I'm a teacher. They're going. Can I go now? I met him at post office. I did it for my mother. Over and above. Butter and jam. As soon as I can. He told me. Is he here? Her aunt's come. Check your progress five. Listen to the stress in the following sentences. He's a good painter. She's a nice girl. Jack and Jill went to get some water. It's a very beautiful building. The Prime Minister of India is quite dynamic. Can I see you at 10? I'm afraid I'm very late today. My father is a retired engineer. The plane to London is delayed by two hours. Can you get me a cup of tea? He is extremely honest. Honesty is the best policy. He is a professor of physics. Can a cobra swim? My neighbor has an imported car. Have you ever traveled by a plane? I worked in States for two years. Jackals are very cunning animals. I have a working knowledge of Arabic. 
It's impossible to please everybody. What an enormous man. She has a very pleasant personality. Uncle Robert visited us yesterday. Please bring me a chair. Would you like anything to drink? Unit 16. Ownership and Accountability 16.4 Listening Tape Script Conversation 1 Good morning, Bell Solutions. This is Arman Khan. What can I do for you? I had ordered a new printer which was delivered to me two days ago. But nobody's come here yet to install it and give me a demonstration of how to use it. When did you say it was delivered to you? I just told you that two days ago. And when did they say they would send somebody? Well, they said they'd send a technician the day of delivery. But as I said, it's already been two days and nobody has turned up. I'll see what I can do and call you back. Conversation 2 Good morning, Aru Speed. This is Mita Chaturvedi. How may I assist you? I had couriered a package to Delhi five days ago, but it hasn't reached its destination yet. I'd like to know why. You say five days ago? Would that have been on the 22nd, sir? That's right. That's surprising then. But you're right. It was our responsibility to see that it was delivered on time. And I'm very sorry for the inconvenience. That's okay, but I needed that package to be delivered fast. Just tell me, what are you going to do about it? I'll need some details from you, and then I'll... 16.5 Writing and Speaking Activity 2 Now listen to these sample conversations. Activity 2 1 Good morning. How may I help you? I have called to find out when I can expect to receive my credit card pin. We usually mail it within seven days of issuing the card. Could you tell me when you received the card? That was three days ago on 13th. Then you can expect to get the letter with the pin before or by the 19th. Are you certain of that? Yes, I'm certain. I'll also double check to make sure it's delivered to you by then. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good day. Two. Good morning. How may I assist you? Hello. I'm having problems securing my new Wi-Fi connection. Though the executive did explain it to me earlier, his directions were a bit confusing. I'd like someone to talk me through it again. That's no problem. Anyway, it was our responsibility to explain it to you more carefully. I'll talk you through the process again today. Could you do it right away? Certainly. Shall we start right away? Yes, thanks. The first thing you need to do is... 3. Good afternoon. How may I help you? I've called in connection with my credit card bill payment cycle. And how may I help you with that? My current cycle is such that I need to pay the bill by the third of the month. I'd like to change it such that the payment is due sometimes in the middle of the month. Let me see what I can do to help you. Could you hold the line for a minute? Sure. Would a cycle starting by the 16th of the month be suitable? That would be perfect. I'll need some details from you and we'll reset your cycle. Thank you. Could you give me your... 4. Good morning. How may I assist you? There seems to be a problem with my credit card bill. What might that problem be? I believe I've been overcharged. My apologies if that has happened, sir. But I'll trace your bill and call you back. There's no need to do any of that. I remember very well how many times I used my credit card this last month. And also the amounts. So please, make the corrections right away. I'm afraid I can't do that. If there's any mistake, we'll adjust it in your next bill. Well, it's not my fault that there is a mistake. This is the second time this has happened. And I refuse to pay in excess of my bill. So see that you make the corrections right away. I'm not authorized to take this decision, but I'll speak with my superior and get back to you before this evening. Make sure that you do that. I assure you I will. 16.7 Pronunciation Check your progress 4. Now listen to where the pauses fall. 1. As I'm going to Mumbai, 
I shan't attend office for a week. 2. Lakshmi is very clever but thoroughly undependable. 3. My uncle went to Chennai last week where he met his old professor who had taught him physics in 1924. 4. Mr. Pandey, our professor of zoology, will be away for a fortnight. 5. Laugh and the world laughs with you. Weep and you weep alone. 6. Jack and Jill went up a hill to fetch a pail of water. 7. Shakespeare was a famous dramatist who lived in the 16th century. 8. You may think you are very famous, but I don't think so. 9. Mr. Rajiv Gandhi became the Prime Minister of India after his mother was assassinated. 10. Several universities in India offer distance education programs these days. 11. George Bernard Shaw wrote a number of plays. 12. There are 20 vowels in English, which can be divided into 12 pure vowels and 8 diphthongs. 13. Rabindranath Tagore was not only a patriot, but also a man of letters, and he was awarded the Nobel Prize in Literature. 14. It's a pity India didn't win any medals in the 1988 Olympics. 15. I don't mind a cup of tea, but I'd prefer some coffee. Unit 17. Handling Complaints 17.4. Listening Activity 2. Listen to these two conversations between an executive and a customer and fill in the gaps. Discuss which of the two executives handled the complaint better and why. How would you have dealt with the conversation that you thought was not handled correctly? Conversation 1 Good morning. Excel Services, this is Alan. What can I do for you? I've called to complain about getting reminders to pay my credit card bill, but I've already paid it three days ago. How's that possible, ma'am? But I have. Do you think I'd lie about this? No. But why would we ask you to pay the bill again? That's what I don't understand. And it's your problem to look into this, not mine. But are you quite certain that you have made the transaction? What do you mean by that? Have I not already told you that I have? Okay. I'll have to check your account status and I'll let you know. May I have your account? Conversation 2 Good afternoon, Pioneer Services. This is Sunil Mehra. How may I assist you? I would like to speak with somebody senior, please. Certainly, sir. Could you please tell me what this is about? No, I don't wish to tell you that because I've already made this request several times. And right now, I've been on the phone for 10 minutes before I finally got to speak to you. I'm sorry you had to put up with such inconvenience. I assure you, I can help you with what is bothering you. Okay, let me tell you this for the last time then. For the last four months, people from your company have been calling my home number for somebody who does not live there anymore. Mm -hmm. I've told them this each time, but the calls persist. So now I would like to speak with someone with authority who can make sure that nobody calls at that number again. I completely understand why you are upset about this. If you could just give me a number, I will delete it from our list right away. How do I make sure nobody from your office will use it anymore? As of now, I assure you that you will not be on our calling list. But in future, if you wish to avail of our services, we will be only too happy to help. The number in question is 12345678. Thank you for your help. You're welcome and have a nice day. 17.5 Writing and Speaking Activity 3 Conversation 1 This is a sample. Yours could be different, but make sure your conversation has the executive speaking politely and not using phrases that imply he believes the customer is lying. He needs to show understanding and concern for the customer, even while insisting that he needs to check the records to verify the truth of the customer's claim. Good morning, Excel Services. This is Alan. How may I assist you? I've called to complain about getting reminders to pay my credit card bill, but I've already paid it three days ago. I completely understand why you're angry. 
if that is what has happened. Would you give me a moment to check the details of your payment? Do you think I would lie about this? No, but in order for me to assist you better in sorting out this confusion, I would have to check our records too. I don't understand why you have to do that. And it's your problem if your records aren't correct, not mine. Rest assured, Mr. Smith, we will not charge you twice for the same bill. But please give me some time to check your account status and I will get back to you by 4 p.m. See that you sort this thing out today. I don't want anyone harassing me for it again. I assure you, I'll take care of it immediately. 17.7 .7. Pronunciation Choice of stress syllables in an utterance 1. If it rains, I shall stay at home. 2. Content words are stressed in an utterance. 3. When we speak, long sentences are divided into smaller bits. 4. Grammar is a branch of linguistics. 5. Phonetics deals with speech. 6. Speech sounds are divided into vowels and consonants. 7. The Mahabharata is one of the greatest epics of the world. 8. Once upon a time, there was a great storyteller who was called Hans Christian Andersen. 9. Robert Browning was a great poet. 10. My friends, an optimist. 11. Srimati Indira Gandhi was assassinated in 1984. 12. The Indian Army is one of the best in the world. 13. Students ought to be disciplined. 14. The Indian medium-range missile Agni was launched in May this year. 15. Whenever the traffic lights are red, all vehicles should stop. 16. I went to the United States of America when I was 19 and stayed there for four years. 17. I am a student of Indira Gandhi National Open University. 18. We have achieved a number of things in our 60 years of independence. 19. Though Ravi is clever, he is extremely undependable. 20. The results of the examination were announced this morning and our school has achieved a unique distinction. Unit 18 Rapport Building and Empathy 18.3 Listening Rapport Building and Empathy Hi Vinay. Hey Raman. Did you attend the talk on Rapport Building and Empathy yesterday? Yes, I did. In fact, initially I thought it would be a big bore. But I was pleasantly surprised that it turned out to be pretty interesting. What did you think of it? I thought it was very informative and helpful too. Do you want to go over the points that were made? It'll be kind of a review for us too. And you may remember some key points I may have forgotten. Sure, sounds like a good idea. I think the first thing the speaker Mr. Pillai said that you should begin the call with a smile because a smiling voice is welcoming and relaxing. And then he made the point about starting the conversation with a warming up sentence to make the customer feel relaxed and the atmosphere friendly. That's right. You were quite attentive, hmm? Which reminds me, he also said that it was very important to listen attentively and also to let the caller know that you were paying attention by making sounds like, hmm, ah? Uh? Yes, and never interrupt while the customer is talking. He said it was very important that you use the words the caller uses. It makes them feel comfortable and reassures them that you're listening keenly. For example, if the caller says, credit card bill, you don't respond with credit card statement. Use the word bill only. Right. And empathize with him to show that you share in his emotions, thoughts or feelings. This is an excellent way of building rapport. And remember, Mr. Pillai also gave us some phrases to show empathy. Yeah, yeah, but we don't need to go over those. And be relaxed and friendly while talking. If you're tense and distant, 
it will act as a barrier to building rapport. Make a conscious effort to use the right tone of voice. You need to sound sincere to assure the caller that you mean what you say. Yes, yes, there was another point about the use of voice. Sit up straight because a bad posture adversely affects the tone of voice. Isn't that it? I think so. He said that rapport building is the foundation for the introduction of products and services that could benefit the customer. Without establishing rapport, you are unlikely to get the results you desire. Activity 2 This is a sample answer for the first situation. Yours could be different. Make similar conversations for the other situations using relevant phrases, sentences from the vocabulary section. Good morning. Efficiency Machines, this is Ramesh. How may I assist you? I bought a washing machine from your company and I was told I would receive a free service after six months. It has been six and a half months. We still haven't got the free service. I was told it would be done last week, but nobody has come so far. I can understand why that must have upset you. I'll arrange for a service engineer to be sent to your place today. But I don't understand why I need to call and remind you of this. I apologize for the inconvenience and assure you this won't happen again. In fact, I'll put in another free service on your service card. All you have to do is fill in the date on which you would like him to come for the next service and he will be there. Thank you. You're welcome and have a good day. 18.7 Pronunciation Choice of the Nucleus I'm a boy. He's an orphan. It's raining. I'm busy. He's honest. It's a pity. I think so. He's arrived. I love you. They're athletes. If a sentence is more than one stress syllable and none of the words is particularly important for the meaning, the stress syllable of the last important word will be the nucleus. Listen to the following examples. In each of them, the stress syllables has been marked as usual with the stress mark and the nucleus has been italicized. It is assumed that in each sentence, no word is specially important and so the speaker has chosen the stress syllable of the last important word as a nucleus. It's raining again. Honesty is the best policy. Thank you very much. It's a ridiculous suggestion. What a tall man. Can I see the principal for a minute? It's impossible to please everybody. John Keats was a famous poet. What's your father's profession? If a sentence is more than one tone group, each tone group will have a nucleus. Listen to the following sentences. Each one of them has more than one tone group. As soon as you reach London, please send me a letter. There have been hundreds of dramatists in England, but Shakespeare was the greatest of them all. Whatever you do, if you're honest in what you do, you'll win the respect and admiration of all. What an extraordinary piece of luck! Kalidas and Valmiki were great poets who wrote in Sanskrit. If you don't listen to your elders, you'll get into trouble. I love sweets, but my mother doesn't allow me to eat them because I'm already fat. I was in Agra last December and saw the Taj, which was beautiful on a moonlit night. India is the largest democracy in the world. I lived in the Middle East for eight years and enjoyed every minute of my stay there. Check your progress for. I must go and meet the Dean tomorrow. Five and three make eight. George is extremely honest in all his dealings and he's also very clever. Indira Gandhi National Open University has a number of study centers which are located in various parts of the country. Each study center has a library. 
the principal told me that I could apply for admission to the College of Engineering. I want to study medicine, but my father insists on my becoming an engineer. Students should be free to choose what they like to study. Delhi is extremely hot in summer, but it's very cold in winter. Bangalore is a beautiful city, and there are several lovely gardens in it. I hate jam with my bread and butter, but my sister loves it. It's impossible for us to catch the flight today, for we are still 10 kilometers from the airport, and one of the tires of our car has a puncture. It was Abraham Lincoln, the famous president of America, who said that democracy is government of the people, for the people, and by the people. Dr. Sarvapalli Radhakrishnan was the second president of the Republic of India. Dr. Radhakrishnan succeeded Dr. Rajendra Prasad. Shakespeare wrote a number of plays. It's a remarkable achievement. I'm going to buy a new carpet for our sitting room. I want to buy a new television set, but I have no money. Unit 19. Probing 19.4 Activity 2 This is a sample conversation for Situation 2. Yours could be different. But make sure it starts with the general and gradually works towards getting specific information. I'd like to buy a printer. Are you looking for a color printer or a black and white one? A black and white one. And do you have a specific company printer in mind? Not really. Any standard good laser printer will do. And do you have a price range in mind? We have printers ranging from 5,000 rupees to 15,000 rupees. Please show me one between 5,000 rupees and 7,000 rupees. Right. Would you step this side, please? These here are four laser printers in the price range you requested. This one. Listening. Questioning techniques and types of questions. Now listen to a talk on questioning techniques and the types of questions you need to be able to ask in order to have effective probing skills. Asking the right question is at the heart of effective communication and information exchange in general. But when probing for information, it is an indispensable tool. The art of effective questioning can not only help you in gathering relevant information faster, it also helps you in understanding people better, hence in building stronger relationships and aiding you in your ability to manage people better. However, to be able to master the technique of effective questioning, we need to look deeper into questioning techniques and question types and when and how to use them. So let's talk about some common questioning techniques and also about when and when not to use them. Closed-ended questions. A closed-ended question is one that usually receives a single word or a very short factual answer. For example, the answer to are you sleepy is yes or no. Similarly, where do you live would generally draw out in response the name of your town or your address. Closed-ended questions are good for 1. Testing your understanding or the other person's as in So, if I get this order, will I get any incentive? This would typically elicit a simple affirmative or negative response. 2. Concluding a discussion or making a decision Now we know the facts. Are we all agreed this is the right course of action? This would again receive a yes or no response. 3. Frame setting. Are you happy with your new broadband connection? But be warned that a misplaced closed-ended question can also kill the conversation and lead to awkward silences. So such questions are best avoided when a conversation is flowing smoothly. Open-ended questions. Open-ended questions are meant to elicit longer answers. They usually begin with what, why or how. An open-ended question asks the respondent for his or her knowledge, opinion or feelings. Of course, in place of a question format, tell me, explain and describe can also be used to get such responses. Here are some examples. What are you looking for in your new job? 
How was the training workshop? Why was he so angry? Tell me what your experience there was like. Explain the reasons for the delay in submitting your report. Open-ended questions are good for 1. Developing the conversation. What did you do at the weekend? 2. Finding out more details. What other topics did the workshop cover? 3. Finding out the other person's opinion or issues. How do you think these changes will help the organization? Probing questions. When we aren't quite satisfied with the quantum of information received as a response to open-ended questions, we follow them up with a probing question that attempts to go a little deeper into the issue. It may take the form of asking for an example to help you understand better what has earlier been stated. At another time, you may just need additional information for clarification. But when do you need this report? Or to investigate whether there is proof for what has been said? How do you know that the new software isn't user-friendly? These are usually follow-up questions to the open-ended ones. Exactly, specific, just are some words that help in asking these probing questions. For example, what is your specific problem with that program? Which specific package was that? What exactly do you mean by simplify it? Just why did you ask for all those details? Probing questions afford you further clarity and also help you to get information out of people who are reluctant to part with it otherwise. Parroting or echo questions. Here, you parrot or echo a part of what the other person has said with an inflection in your voice that turns it into a question. You use this form of questioning to gain more information or even to confirm that part of the information. For example, to confirm. Could you mail me a duplicate copy of my invoice for the month of May? For the month of May? To gain more information. I have called to ask about the delivery of the order I placed. The order you placed? Leading questions. Leading questions try to steer the person you are communicating with towards your way of thinking. But they carry the danger of being misused and may cause the other person to feel they are being manipulated. When used judiciously and with tact and understanding, they can aid you in helping the other person to come to a decision. Especially when you're dealing with customers who are unsure of themselves or unable to make up their minds. You can use them with questions like, Plan B would suit you better, wouldn't it? You wouldn't want to come in on Sunday, would you? This five-day package to France suits you best, doesn't it? A billing cycle starting the middle of the month would be more convenient for you, right? Which plan would you like to go ahead with, A or B? Would you like me to approve option 3 for you? Note that leading questions tend to be close-ended. They generally help you in closing a sale and are good for getting the answer you wanted and at the same time leave the other person feeling they made the choice. A win-win situation at both ends. The advantages of using the right question type in the right place. You've probably used all of these question types over and over in your everyday life, at work and at home. But by consciously choosing the appropriate kind of questioning for each situation, you can make it more effective and maximize the gains in terms of information gained and achieving the desired outcome. For gaining information, use open and close-ended and probing questions. For relationship building, use open-ended general questions about interest and opinions. To avoid misunderstandings, avoid jumping to conclusions and use probing questions to seek clarification, particularly when the consequences are significant. To diffuse a heated situation, calm an angry customer or colleague by using funnel questions to get them to go into more detail about their grievance. This will not only distract them from their emotions, but show them that you are concerned and possibly help you to identify what you can do to soothe frayed nerves. To persuade. No one likes being lectured to. Instead, ask open-ended questions to gently nudge people into looking at the reasons behind your point of view. What do you think about bringing the sales force in for half a day to have their laptops upgraded? For managing and mentoring. 
Use leading questions to get people to reflect and to commit to courses of action that you've suggested. Wouldn't it be a good idea to have a training program to help us switch to the new software? 19.7 Pronunciation The Important Functions of Intonation Now listen to these sentences. Looking for something? Looking for something? Going to Mumbai. Going to Mumbai? Coffee. Coffee? Snake. Snake. John is a good actor. John is a good actor. You are attending the conference. You are attending the conference? Shantara. Shantara? You are listening to a program on customer services. Content coordinator, Professor Anju Sehgal Gupta. Program coordinator, Dr. Geetika Johari. Audio recording, Parvesh Kumari. Editing, Naeem Akhtar. Producer, Manoj Bhatnagar. This program was brought to you by Electronic Media Production Center of Indira Gandhi National Open University.